Well, good morning this Friday morning. So glad you could join us. Welcome from me, Golf. Welcome to my study in the loft. And uh, I hope that you'll enjoy these next few moments as we just take a few moments to, to centre our hearts, our focus on, on the Lord Jesus, ready for the day ahead. We're going through the book of Revelation and we're in some of the most exciting chapters in the whole Bible, which... Uh, I think are pretty much guaranteed to do you good. So let's pray and see what the Lord has for us. Lord Jesus, we, 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 we what, what an amazing thing to belong to you. What, what, a, what a wonderful thing to be able to say, I, I've been made new, I belong to the Lord. My life is secure in him. I have a hope and a future because Jesus is alive. What a, oh Lord. Please, I, I pray this morning as we open your word that you, you'd come and speak to us, you'd do us good, that our lives will be centred on you today and not on all the stuff going on in the world around us. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Well, it is a real feast, these chapters. John being shown into the throne room of heaven is going to be given heaven's perspective through a series of visions that now he's now going to see. And um, uh, as I said, I, I started to say yesterday, heaven is full of worship. <laughs> it's just full of worship. And, uh, and when we worship, we are becoming part of that. And that's why worship is so significant, so important. Uh, singing, speaking out, it's, it's hugely important. And um, uh, it, it, it's, it, it does us good. So we, we began yesterday looking at that. We're now in chapter 5, and here we go in chapter 5. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, that, there's, that's, that's the Lord, um, then I, uh, the, uh, a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? Okay, here we go. So we've got this first vision that um, John is being is being being given, and I, I mentioned at the beginning of the week how a lot of the imagery in, in Revelation comes from Daniel. In other words, you know, when Daniel was seeing seeing things in the future, um, th uh, chapter seven, thrones were in place, the Ancient of Days. Uh, he was clothing white as snow, thrown flaming with fire, uh, and so on and so forth. And then it said, the court was seated and books were opened. So there's some similarity going on. So a scroll with seven seals. What's this, what's this all about? Well, there are various options on this. Is it the, um, book of, is, it, is it the Lamb's Book of Life? You know, our names will be written. Well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure that that's what it is, because, for reasons I'll explain in a moment. Um, is it the book of judgment? Is it a, a book of things that, are gonna, you know, uh, that, that God's going to bring Well, that, on the earth? That, that's, a, that's a possibility. Most commentators, um, and, you know, I, 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 I go along with this. It's a book of, it's, it, this, this, this scroll is about God's, I think, God's redemptive purposes on the earth. And it's as though it's the, it, it's the, it's, it's the scroll of his story, history, his story, and and so it's really, you know, when when they when they see this scroll, who is worthy? Who who's in control? Who uh, ha, who's in charge of history? Who's worthy to to, to determine the, the 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 flow of history? Is anyone in control? Is anyone able to um, uh, to bring good out of the chaos, the suffering in the world? Who is worthy? Okay, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? Who's who's who is in control of the flow of his history, his story? Okay. No one, no one could open the scroll or even look inside. And I wept and I wept. I wept because 
no one was found worthy to look at it. Oh God, it's a closed book. Oh God, is it just a closed book? Is history just a closed book? What's going on in the world today? Is it just chaotic, out of control? Then one of the elders said to me, don't weep. <laughs> this is a good verse. Don't weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. And he is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. <laughs> is that awesome? Is that wonderful? Don't weep. No need to weep. No need to cry. No need to think that the world is just to be, to be fearful. Why? The lion. I'm thinking Aslan. The lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David. This is the promised one all the way down through the years. The promised one. The root of David. He has triumphed. Oh, you know, we just passed Easter, haven't we? He's... He, he rose from the dead. He's broken the power of sin and death and he's risen. He's taken on himself all the sin of the world so that we could be made righteous. He has triumphed. He's able to open the scroll. He's in control now. It's not just heading for chaos and total destruction. He's in control. He's able to open the scroll and it's seven seals. Now, listen to this bit here. Don't weep. See the line of the tribe of Judah. Next verse. Then I saw a lamb looking as though it had been slain, standing the centre of the throne. <laughs> Isn't that, you know, this is beautiful, actually. I hope I've got time to finish this off. The lion has triumphed. The lamb slain. Do you see? Do you see what's happening here? I, I think what I better do is I'm going to read a quote to you. I recommended a book a while ago. It's actually in the bookstore at Kings now. Um, John Piper, Seeing and Saving Jesus Christ. And uh, let me read this about the lion and the lamb. It's the Lord Jesus, of course, the lion and the lamb. This is John Piper. And this is entitled The Excellencies of Jesus Christ. A lion is admirable for its ferocious strength and imperial appearance. A lamb is admirable for its meekness and servant-like provision. Wool for our clothing. But even more admirable is a lion-like lamb and a lamb-like lion. What makes Christ glorious, said John Jonathan Edwards, over 250 years ago, is an admirable conjunction of diverse excellencies. Do you get that? It's the breadth of who he is. He's awesome. Okay. For example, we, we admire Christ for his transcendence, but even more because the transcendence of his greatness is mixed with submission to God's will. We marvel at him because his uncompromising justice is tempered with mercy. His majesty is sweetened by meekness. He baffled the proud scribes with his wisdom, but was simple enough to be loved by children. He could still the storm with a word, but wouldn't strike the Samaritans with lightning or take himself down from the cross. The glory of Christ is not a simple thing. It's a coming together in one person of extremely diverse qualities. So Christ is a lamb like lion and a lion like lamb. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I'm gentle and humble in heart. The lamb like gentleness and humility of this lion woos us in our weary weariness and we love him for it. But this quality of meekness alone would not be glorious. The gentleness and humility of the lamb-like lion become brilliant alongside the limitless and everlasting authority of the lion-like lamb. Only this fits our longing for greatness. Oh Lord, you, you are awesome. 
expand our vision, our understanding of who you are, Lord Jesus, the lion and the lamb. And we're so glad that you're like that. You're powerful. You're gracious. And we love you for it. So, Lord, go with us today and expand our vision of yourself. May we be true worshippers in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> We've made some progress. I hope it's done you good this week. Do join us again next week when we go a bit further in this, these wonderful chapters of Revelation. Bye now.